Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Uh, We are having some technical issues with the live stream. I don't know whether it's the software, whether it's YouTube. Uh, Hell, I don't even know if we are live. I have to check my phone because, my God, talk about back-to-back weeks of getting kicked right in the nuts. Folks, um, I apologize uh, for the the level of... uh, terribleness i should say um but thank you so much for being here let's uh let's see if we are, well, well it says that we are live okay uh let me just uh sh- sh- shout out there are already 70 people here we're gonna have an amazing show um just uh okay you guys do hear me thanks joe dunmore for that let's get into the introductions and then i'll see if i can get the gameplay going folks i have no idea what the f is going on but it's not good uh but listen we're going to start with uh, our newest member who uh, didn't make last week's show. He had some family stuff that happened behind the scenes, but he's here for you today. Cotton McCast. What's up, brother? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm excited to be a part of the show officially and that I made it here. Yeah, just because we were running a little late, so I made it here right on time after the fact. And uh I'm excited to be a part of the show, dude. It's been a long time coming for me. And uh, you got a great panel here. Love talking with VJ and Barksenberger. And you always, and you always cook up a fire show, man. And, uh, we got well, I appreciate yeah. well, I definitely appreciate that. And having you uh, join us is a big deal for me. You've been on the show many times as, uh, as a guest. And now you are permanently on this panel. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and uh, let's go next to, of course... Archimedes, uh, now listen, if, you, if, you, if you're not already following him on Twitter, if you're not already su- uh, supporting him on YouTube by, click, you know, by, jo- you know, being a, a, you know, either a channel member or, of course, being subscribed, you're missing out on some incredible content. Uh, he's been putting out video after video after video and all absolute fire. How are you doing there, Boxberger? Happy gaming, happy gaming. I'm doing great. I mean, the gaming season has started. Yeah, so many games are coming out. We have so much to play. Uh, we get news like today, the PlayStation event. I am excited. It's it's a great time to be a gamer, and it's even a better time to be on this show here today. We have some amazing topics to talk about. As always, the panel is stellar, so I can't wait for today's show. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it's it's, it's going to be a lot. Of, we have a lot to get into, uh, a lot to talk about, a lot to get excited about. Some big questions to be asked. Uh, one of our biggest um, issues with uh, the Xbox, specifically the Series S and X, has been the lack of, of I don't know what else to say other than, you know, disappointment. Uh, not lack of disappointment, a lot of disappointment. Uh, their DVR has been... Uh, passable at best um and we have some new information that that could be changing in a big way and thank thank heavens because uh, i've been using my series x uh basically without hdr support because i have to record footage and i don't have two series uh x's i have only one and one is used to play games on and record footage and unfortunately we are not uh you know we we can't record the footage uh, because the DVR is just not really working that well, which is not good. Um, and we do, uh, you know, and I know Boxenberger yourself, you have, um, you know, reached out to Jason Ronald regarding this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he has, listen, I, and, I, and I have it in my notes, uh, he has been very face forwarding regarding this. Uh, they have not shied away that, yeah, there's a problem. And yes, they're going to they're, they're gonna fix the problem. And now we have some information on uh you know what that is going to be but w- before we get into that story and we're going to get deep into it vj welcome back brother our linguist has returned to his seat to once again dazzle us with his very intricate ways of breaking down these topics how the hell are you bro uh, good morning boom good morning uh panel and uh, everybody in the chat thanks for having me back on the show boom and uh really looking forward to the topics Yes. Well, it's glad to have you back. And yeah, the topics are going to be uh, worthy of, a, you know, a, a nice 90 minute to two hour show. Um, I think everyone is going to be very, very happy uh, with what we're going to talk about. You know, I, I kind of want to bring up almost almost immediately for topic number one, some new information regarding Forza Horizon 5. Uh, this is a game that is unbelievably 
uh, one of the most anticipated games, not just for Xbox gamers. Obviously, it's an exclusive, right? You're going to be able to play it on your Series XS, of course, or your old, uh, you know, you know, Xbox consoles. But of course, the best place to play is going to be on the next gen hardware. Now, what's interesting uh, is we have a confirmation of the amount of cars that are going to be releasing. And right now, folks, uh, 426 cars at launch for you to choose from. And this has been confirmed by Playground Games. And you know what's interesting? They promise that there are a lot more announcements to come before November 9th. Now, let's get to the bad news. Uh, let's get the bad news of, about Forza Horizon 5 out of the way. They have confirmed, and this is, again, directly from Playground Games, there's not going to be a demo of this game. Um, now, I know some people are going to be like, you know, get out the boo birds and say, why, why, why can't we get a little time with the game before it launches? And I, I hear you. I actually wouldn't even argue with you on that. I'd say, you know something? You're on to something. But, you know, to be, to be fair, they're still working on the game. The game doesn't come out until November. They, they still have another 60-ish kind of days ahead of, the, ahead of release. Um, listen, we don't get a demo. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm just happy we're getting the game on time with no delays. Boxenberger, what do you think about the, the no demo situation? Yeah, well, people forget um, that we are still in the middle of a pandemic. Yes, um, and putting a demo together is a lot of work. It is, uh, yeah, you have to, to take content out of the game. You have to build everything up, compile everything together, make sure it runs, especially a demo that you launch up front to the main game. Um, you have to really make sure that you don't run into technical issues, bug fixing, and so on. And it is a different build than the actual main game. And I think we all should consider that during this time, um, we still have the issues with a lot of people working from home and things are just not as efficient as they were before prior to the pandemic yeah so um i'm totally good with having no demo um i mean the other thing really is it's it's a day one game pass game so people can just try it out it's not like you have to put down uh 70 uh, euros um to get the the game um and see how it is yeah you can try it out anyway and you can try out or check out the full game on game pass um obviously not everyone is a game pass subscriber uh, i get that um but uh yeah it's it's for me it is totally fine i i get why they don't do it um it's a lot of work and resources and capacity in the development studios are rare these days and valuable and they better spend the time polishing up the actual game than wasting the time in doing a demo so i'm good yeah, with that 100 yeah let's get to cotton cotton you know demos are in the dna of xbox and sorry that i'm not on camera folks um i again my my pewter is you know, top of the line, and I have no idea why we're kind of struggling to do some regular stuff that we do on a regular basis. So to kind of uh, offload some of the work that's going on in the background, I'm not doing camera today. We'll come back at it on tomorrow's Breakfast of Boom. Hopefully we'll have everything ready to go with no hiccups. But uh, Cotton, getting back to the DNA uh, that is Xbox, it has been in its past uh, demos. Uh, and of course, being, you know, as digital as we are, it's almost expected. Right to get a demo of a game, yeah. especially a big one. Are you disappointed with the no demo thing, or you're are you okay with it? Uh, I'm not disappointed. Not to be honest. I mean, as of late, at least just since this whole pandemic era that we've had over the past year, two years almost now, I don't think we've gotten a lot of demos. And I think um, he touched on that a little bit. I mean, it's just a different it's a different time, and people are actually out there polishing off games fully you know for actual release as opposed to demos and i mean even with the way that we had e3 and stuff you know a lot of times when you see demos shown at e3 you get like a sort of snippet of what you have seen to be played you know and there wasn't there's was a lot more like gameplay montages and f footage than like actual demos you know we have little bits that we have seen but i'm not I was kind of expecting this, you know, it's been a long time since we were in that 
Xbox magazine era where we had the discs come in, you know, and you had demos roll yeah. out in the magazine. I still have a bunch of those old demo discs, you know, like with uh, <laughs> like the Battlefront 2 one laying around. Just classic, classic times. I remember um, demos were a huge deal back in the day. And I just think as of late, they haven't been. Not that I don't miss them, but I'm not not really disappointed, you know. Do the do your due diligence and make the game ready. And uh, people consume media like no other, you know. So it's different than, you know, I'd pop on my Xbox 360 and go check out all the new demos. You know, I, now I'll go pop on Twitter and YouTube and it, even the, the devs' blogs or whatever. It's, you know, you kind of get the gist of what you're going to be getting. It's, it's um sucks a little bit because everyone's eager to play it but you know not a big deal with how many cars they're adding like you said they're uh the game's gonna be massive you know yeah i mean it's it's probably gonna be the biggest uh one uh sounds in like the series it. Yeah, yeah. it certainly yeah it certainly sounds like it and you know something uh folks the gameplay has started i, I dropped another file in here it's titanfall you know what I'm sorry because I have I, I I hate going off kilter. I you know I I I come at these shows extremely prepared. I'm I'm always disappointed when we have a bit of a hiccup. Thankfully things seem to be kind of working out. Cross the fingers, right? You know, do the you know whatever you have to do to keep the show running correctly. A uh, quick public announcement, and we'll get BJ's opinion on this. Um, Listen, folks, you know my favorite game of all time, or at least in the last generation, top five Titanfall my favorite series uh i have a ridiculous i have an, an abundance of, of of footage because it's one of my favorite games to play folks please do not load this game up there's apparently hackers have got themselves in there with this and apex legends and they're taking over people's consoles that's the rumor uh, uh respawn and ea are aware of it uh, I would. I was. I was advised by several people in the community to uninstall it, which I did. I actually un uninstalled Titanfall One as well and Apex Legends, which I don't even know why I was in there because I don't play that game. It's just not my bag. Um, yeah, uh, until we get the the okay, and I know the game is old, but as you can tell by the footage that I've played on numerous shows, this game still kicks total ass, and I'm still waiting for number three. I don't know if we're gonna get it. Hopefully, we will in some form or fashion. But yeah, real quick, uh, do not load up this game. If it's on your hard drive in any way, uninstall it ASAP until we get the word from both Respawn and EA that it is okay to play this game. Um, but listen, let's get back to um, let's get back to it, so to speak. Uh, VJ, uh, yes. demo. <clears throat> demos, again, something we all look forward to. Now, we, we really, we don't get as many demos. And a lot of people, including myself, were kind of expecting <clears throat> at least maybe like a 30-minute, a uh, you know, run around of it. But just the, the ideology of trying to put a demo of this game that is that is going to be very large seems, seems like something you would have to pull developers or, or, or development off of the game to get it ready for its launch. So I am... I'm with I'm with everyone here. I'm okay with it. How do you feel about the no demo situation? Um, I think that time, energy, resource, um, let alone um, a perfect build with no bugs, as um, our community has quite rightly uh, pointed out, is is a huge distraction. Um, in my time during game development, I was I was never relaxed when studios I was monitoring were were under pressure to to produce you know um at a whim or even if it was planned you know a, a demo of sorts right and um and if you want a precursor as to what to expect from fours of five please try fours of four so and it's uh it's it's not a it's, it's not as if it's a brand new franchise right or a remaking or a reimagining of a franchise uh, you know i.e tales of arise re releasing tomorrow and I would say that PGG have, have nothing to prove. They are best in class at what they do and produce. And uh, there's no need to, you know, a 30-minute runaround, as you say. There's no need to kick the tires, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, of, uh, of like four that. to five. And 
and uh, no disrespect to you know Gran Turismo, uh, as I've said, you know I, I personally feel that Forza Forza series is, is is best in class. No disrespect to Gran Turismo, of course, it kickstarted a, a generation of new kind of racer. So, uh, and you really haven't got that long to wait, right? And it's in Game Pass. So, uh, if you want a demo, just play the full game in in um, yeah, less great than, point. Less than ten weeks. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic yeah. point. That's just a demo the full point. game. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. That's actually that's actually genius, uh, to be quite honest. Because yeah, um, if you were on the fence, first of all, I, I, I like how you, you painted this picture, uh, and it's and it's you know standard work for you. Um, you turn around and you say, "Well, this is not a new franchise." You, 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 if, you, if you have any doubt as to what the, then they're going to deliver, the precursor is play play uh, Forza Horizon Four, available on Xbox Game Pass right now, and it's quite frankly incredible. Um, and uh, we know that we're getting an even better version, a bigger version of that, which is kind of hard to fathom, considering that they have um, mapped out uh, the country of Mexico in such a way uh, that is going to really entice players like myself who I like, who love collecting the signs, who love finding all the secrets, who mm -hmm. love the, the, the barn finds and things of that nature. Um, I think we're going to be in for a real treat. So that, that's actually well put. If you if you have any doubt and you're not sure, the demo, well, the, the demo, which AKA full game, will be available, I believe, on the 9th of November. So we only a couple of weeks away. So good stuff as always. But uh, I'm going to keep it with you, VJ. Um, and I want to, I'll, I'll, I'll circle it back to Cotton and Boxenberger. Um, cool. 426 confirmed vehicles to start. Um, uh, that is, that is something to be said. And you know, something I, I, I want to bring up Gran Turismo. Uh, now listen, OG Gran Turismo, King of the Hill, right? They, they were, they were the standard folks in gaming during the, some of the PlayStation's greatest era, taking nothing away from what they did to PlayStation four, but let's call a spade a spade here. Uh, their last, um, foray into Gran Turismo uh, wasn't that good. And they only launched with 100-something cars. Uh, so when you turn around and you look at what Playground game is delivering, still within the pandemic, by the way, uh, PS, by the way, um, 426 cars, my God. Uh, and that's that's just the start. You could imagine by the time that we get this, this game gets a year under its belt, we're talking maybe five, six, 700 cars potentially. How excited are you to pick your favorite ride? Oh, um, I've got sort of two two chains of thoughts here. So I'll start as a as a as a consumer. So look, I want to be totally honest up front here. I'm, I'm, I'm by no by no stretch of the imagination am I sort of a vehicle or car racing game enthusiast. Um, on the other hand, it's funny because it was just last night I was speaking to an ardent fan of the of uh, of Forza and uh, on the uh, midweek gaming show. And uh, Mr. Tushi, <clears throat> who watches this show very regularly, as, I'm, as I'll tell you, um, <clears throat> Boom, because he, he travels up and down England um, in his truck. And, uh, yeah, this this show is uh, on the top of his list. That's and, awesome. And, I'm, I'm happy to know that. That's, that's him, very cool. He, he's, he's on the truck for several hours at a time, Boom. And, uh, yeah, so um, this show ke definitely keeps him entertained. And and he's, um, excuse me, <clears throat> he's an, um, an ardent Forza for enthusiasts. Uh, as well as a motor vehicle um, student and connoisseur, I, I should add. And I believe it was um, <clears throat> last weekend, he, he visited um, a sort of a Japanese-themed car festival somewhere in the middle of the UK. And I, I think it's where, you know, individuals can bring along and exhibit their own personal customized uh, Japanese sports car. And you can check out Mr. Tushi's Twitter page uh, for photos and more info. And he's got, and he's still posting tons and tons of um, Forza 4, uh, um, um, is it, sorry, in-game shots and so on and so forth. And as I recall, Mr. Tushi is a huge fan uh, of the Forza Forza franchise also literally I think it was on the real shed a tear when Forza 5 was announced so um and it's it's um seeing that it's it's like a testament right to his love for the franchise and as to how he can even recall elements from earlier sort of Forza Forza titles uh, and compare them to 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 them uh, to the same sort of um, elements um in, in the modern games so from a fan's perspective, from an ardent fan's perspective, that's emotion and passion for you. And then you come to someone like me who's just like a light user. And I would say like 426 cars. And I said this to him, 426 cars seems like a lot, if not excessive for a game. And Mr. Tushi, as you can probably imagine, strongly disagreed. So whether whether you're a, 
a hardcore uh, sort of enthusiast or a light user like me who's not attached or deeply invested in Forza, but I still play it. In my case, I'm just, you know, when we talk about Forza, and we've talked about it on this channel before, right, being set in Mexico, and the more and more I see it's being set in Mexico, the more and more I think it's the right choice, the more and more I sort of feel, fall in love with every time I see a snippet of, um, of gameplay, right, posted on YouTube and so on and so forth. And I'm just looking forward to playing the game and enjoying the scenery that Mexico has to offer. And I'll, I'll obviously try all different sorts of vehicles, but I don't know too much about cars. And then so from that side, but then I look at it from the development standpoint, right? And we've already talked about uh, PGG sort of being best in class and so on and so forth. And when I look at it from a development standpoint, it's it's remarkable. I can only imagine the, the time and human resource, the outsourcing required yeah. to produce each and every vehicle uh, model for this game. And that's let alone anything else, right? Whether it's, you know, any other element within the game, you know, visual effects, backgrounds and so on and so forth, right? And I'm sure models uh, or, or, or 3d models um from the previous game perhaps might have been repurposed right but it seems like there's a lot of new stuff in there i haven't seen before and maybe that's because i haven't played the fours of four enough but i'm not entirely sure but it's still really impressive and it's even more impressive when you think of the the sort of finicky and arduous approval processes you have to navigate through each and every you know licensed car manufacturer they're not easy to deal with and look i, I haven't played Gran Turismo, as you mentioned, boom, uh, since like the PlayStation 1 and PS2 days, like you said, where they set a standard and obviously certain companies, well, PGG, let's just put it out there, surpassed them, right? And I know people may argue it, but for me, if I want to play a racing game, I'll, I will go and play PGG's Forza series, right? And so I, I don't know how many sort of cars the GT series has offered since Gran Turismo 1 or 2 in, in research iterations or, or release of, uh, you know, and, and, sorry, in in, in the recent sort of iterations in terms of the release of the game. And thus, I, I, and thus I can't begin to sort of make a comparison as to whether or not Forza 5 stands out on its own in terms of the sheer volume of vehicles compared to its sort of closest challenger or, or, or competitor. My hope is PGG have given thought to, obviously they've given thought to the vehicles, but if there was one gripe that I had, I, I would really hope that they look to expand the choice of music and radio channels on offer, and they've really expanded that out compared to Forza 4. That was my only gripe and criticism of the game as, as I was playing it. Um, I just wanted to have more diversity in, um, compared to Forza 4, and I was just surprised, and I know licensing is involved, but obviously licensing involved with, with car manufacturers as well, but to add like more tracks and or classical music or radio stations, you know, get to the game via updates, and, and that's the only thing I'm really hoping that will help me, help immerse me more into the game so I enjoy it even more. And other than that, uh, minor gripe, uh, boom, I think we're all looking forward to, I, I think, is it November 7th or 22nd? I can't remember what the, what the date is. Uh, yeah, I think it's early, uh, early uh, yeah. uh, from what I from what I remember. I, I, I'll, I'll confirm the date, but I'm, I'm right there with you. Real quick, I want to shout out a uh, channel member has rejoined the Master Clowns X3. What's up, brother? I hope that you're well. I haven't seen you in chat in a while. I hope that you and your family are doing well. And uh, real quick shameless plug i know this is an xbox show but folks tonight at 7 p.m eastern standard time you guys and gals are getting a bonus episode of prime time gaming that's right we're coming back now i don't know who the cast is gonna be right now it's just me and you know what if that's the case then so be it but i believe that my brother's uh on on a few of the other shows are gonna kind of team up like a like a you know a, like a like the Avengers, and uh, we're going to give you, you know, an hour, hour and ten full-on reactions, uh, conversation um, to what Sony shows, and um, then, of course, we're going to do it all over again on Friday morning's Breakfast with Boom, and we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 Pro $700, which is rumored, uh, which is ridiculous, and of course, we're going to be going into further detail as to what Sony showed. Were we disappointed? Did they did they deliver? Did the first party come out? Did they, you know? Because remember, folks, this is the first time we're hearing from Sony almost the entire year because everything else that they've done has been all, all you know, a, barely a wet fart. Not not to be like you know graphic or anything, but that's pretty much what it's been. Um, and as as a PlayStation fan, and I'm a fan. It's been a little bit frustrating because they're they're not uh, clear as glass uh, and transparent as uh, we we are we're so used to with Microsoft, and you know what? Hopefully that they bring they bring it tonight uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
their 40 minute show hopefully has some quote unquote bangers and joe if you're listening that's another five dollars for the jar um but uh boxerberg let's get your opinion on this 426 cars to start um yeah. that's pretty epic man and considering and again i i you know i don't want to say that it should be better or worse because of the pandy but to, to have that many cars at, at jump is pretty impressive <laughs> yeah it is it is um the question really is is it necessary uh, i mean <laughs> who do, who drives 400 and something different cars <laughs> I, I usually find like three that i'm really yeah, good at handling exactly. they're in and my then, favorites i go to them like i'm driving an audi right now it's a star wars audi someone did like a like an empire one which is dope uh, and you yeah. probably see me driving it and i go to that car almost that and the warthog almost exclusively but yeah the wow, warthog 126 um, bro that's crazy <laughs> I, I i always buy the uh, uh, in game those cars uh, that i actually worked on in real life uh, you know i work awesome, in the automotive dude. industry there are a couple of cars in there that i've actually worked on um i always get those and then one or two other cars and that that's about it um <laughs> Our comedians, I was going to say, we're probably going to get a super chat from Mr. Tushi uh, claiming that we're all lightweights. <laughs> oh, there's no doubt. I, I'm a lightweight. But I still, I, I listen, I, I, still love, I still love it. <laughs> no, um, don't get me wrong. Um, it's, it's great to have them in there. Uh, I mean, for I know there are a lot of car enthusiasts that like to collect those cars um, in-game. And so for them, it's great. Um I personally prefer, uh, rather than a lot of cars, fuel cars, and they are well designed with a lot of detail. I'm not saying that they aren't as detailed um, as they should be, but um, we have seen comparisons last time with Forza Motorsport 7 and Gran Turismo, where Gran Turismo um, took the lead in when it ca came to interior details and stuff like that. Um, in the end, uh, it is minor things, yeah. And um, today, it is like like it is. The developers have basically all the CAD models from the car manufacturers anyway, so it's really not that big of a, a deal for them to put the cars actually in in game. Um, and once you have that model, you can carry it easily over to the next game and the next game and uh, just uh, add a little more um, rendering, um, pre-render, pre uh, interior pre-renders and stuff like that, a little bit more detail here and there to adapt to the adjustments of the engine. But in the end, those models carry with you once you have the uh, actual CAD model from the, from the uh, car manufacturer and then you're good to go. So, yeah, it's good to have those in there. It just shows you how big the game actually is. Um, I'm more excited about the actual size of the map and the stuff that you can do. They have now said um, it takes you up to 20 hours to complete the campaign, which is pretty awesome. That is actually what I was uh, more excited about than the uh, amount of cars, um, but that's just my personal preference. Um, I love the, those races. I like that they have uh, more um, event showcase races than ever before. I love the diversity of the biomes and that there's actually a lot of stuff in the campaign to for me to, to play. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, it, it it is just, the amount of cars is just one part that the overall message was this is the biggest Forza Horizon ever. It is the most uh, more most diverse Forza Horizon ever, and yeah. that's what I'm excited about. I can't wait. It is my go-to racer. Um, I love the mix of uh, the arcade racing feeling, the open world, and um, ac an actual good feeling and handling of of the uh, car physics. Uh, it, it's a good mix. Um, it's approachable. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm super excited for the game. Yeah, I mean it makes two of us, and I think I think what jumps off the page you you, you made mention of it is the biomes. Uh, we, you know, you 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 in, in regular season because you know they had seasons, right? You can drive in the winter, you can drive in the summer, spring, fall. This over here, you know, if you choose that you feel like driving in snow, you can head up to the volcano, which is freaking crazy. You're driving over a volcano, right? And uh, 
I mean, listen, there, there's a lot. Yeah, a that, lot. that's basically their, their, their thing this time to, to bring diversity to the game. They got rid of the seasons, which they had in four. They were awesome. They always brought something new to the table. There was really an actual difference in between when you race in summer or winter. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it was awesome. It, it, it made the game diverse. And this time they are just going, like you said, with the, in the diversity of the environments, the biomes, the kind of races they have um, and that's just great to see how playground always wants to bring that diversity in in the racing um, um, ac across the map across the the play, um, gameplay elements and so on and that's just so good yeah well done absolutely and cotton let's get your opinion on this brother um 426 mm -hmm. cars man nothing to sneeze at and uh, you know so again you'll, you'll get some people be like hey do we really need them? The answer is for me, the more the better. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm assuming we're going to get a lot of, of vehicles that we have seen brought forward from past Forza Horizons 3, 4, obviously. Uh, a lot of new ones, some new cover cars uh, uh, that, that are going to grace the cover of the game. Um, I, I'm super stoked. Where do you fall in the amount of vehicles from Jump? Yeah, I mean, the more the merrier, right? That's exactly right. I mean, I have some friends who are just, like, diehard car dudes, you know, who, like, this is the game they look forward to. It's this and motorsport, like, always. Like, they got the full, they'll take, they have, like, their own mechanic shops, and they'll take car seats out of cars and, like, get the whole steering wheel set up, and they'll have a huge setup just to play Horizon, right? And those are my friends who are like, they'll probably end up driving almost every car, if not for just like, you know, just to test it out for a little bit. And I mean, it's cool. You, you can, there's more cars to find in the barns, you know, they have all different types of cars for all the biomes you're talking about, like how they had the, the Bronco now on the cover. Yes. So they're going to have like, you know, some more off-roading like trucks and Jeeps, which is going to be cool, kind of change it up a bit. I think it's awesome. I mean, I know Forza Horizon 4 had like something close to 400 cars at least at launch as well. And I think now after all the DLC, they're a lot closer to like 600, 700 cars. And they have immense detail, uh, at least on the outside. I mean, I haven't really played a lot of um, Gran Turismo in my life, but uh, I always thought the detail was phenomenal in the world and on the cars, you know, and I don't think it's super lacking there especially with the how many cars they add you know i think it's nothing to be worried about i mean you're probably i've to be honest i have played horizon one and three the most out of all of them just because i have such a huge backlog i didn't play a lot of four but i love the location the locations and the cars you know and uh see how they're mixing it up here like you guys mentioned with uh being able to go from the jungle up to the snow cap volcano and probably i'm just interested to see how if you i can't remember in four if you could kind of switch cars on the flyer you have to pull yeah back you, up yeah, to yeah, the, you, yeah at some point you just have to pay a delivery fee that's uh, right yeah yeah and that's cool i mean so i see all the different uh in the trailer, we saw them getting dropped off by the the big cargo plane and Which all that. Which is dope, so, dude. Yeah, I want to see how if they can change it up at all. If they're having any like, if it's always going to be the one plane, or if you're going to have like some cargo bob, like helicopters dropping off cars. It'd be cool to see if they have different entrances for different cars and how it all how it all fits together. I mean, I'm excited to play it. Mexico looks like a fantastic location, man. And uh. It just looks like a picture, perfect sort of detail all the way around. And I'm excited to go explore. I've never been to that country. And this is like even back whenever Forza Horizon, the original set in Colorado came out. I think I was like just graduating high school. And I was thinking about and talking about moving out to Colorado. And that game came out. And dude, I just... I always wanted to, but that was just another push over the edge. It's like, man, this I have to go. I have to go live there. And here I'm living in Colorado all these years later. And now this is a, something that's going to make me want to go visit other places. I already want to go to Italy and all these other locations. I've driven around immensely in Horizon. And 
Like the more cars, the merrier. I think you hit it right on I agree. the head. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. And I, and I, and I, and I, listen, here's the thing, folks. Uh, if you only use a couple of cars, that's cool because that's how yeah. I usually roll. I, I find a car that I'm really good at handling. I do some upgrades to it. I make sure that I don't over upgrade it because you can do that and ruin your 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 feeling for the car. And as great as it is that there are that many vehicles, I I I don't take advantage of it. But here's the thing: there are going to be people that do. And the option, which of course we always say options are good, this is this is why we need uh, for them to deliver on the cars. And and obviously they they have. A uh, real quick one to shout out: a couple of super chats that have come in. And we had, bloody hell, um, okay, here it is. Uh, Horace drops an outstanding $2 Super Chat and says, tonight, will they let Jim, Ryan, Jim Dance Roof's my, uh, Ryan talk, to, uh, talk? If they want a good show, maybe not. He's not the best speakers. I mean, obviously, he's got to he's get out there. he got to do his thing. Um, I don't know. I don't think you're going to get a lot of talking heads. In fact, I would even dare say, that we don't get any. I, I, I don't think we're even going to have Herman Holtz come out and be like, hey, PlayStation gamers, you know, this is for you. Merry Christmas early. Um, it's a 40 minute show, folks. Uh, so I, I think that uh, if they have any talking heads, it's going to pull away from what we're there to see. Yeah, I think it's going to hit you over the head with announcements and yeah, yeah, everything uh, like that. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think it, it has to be that. It, it cannot be any talking heads because the show is just, it's just not long enough. Um, so we, we will definitely. And I think we, Jim Ryan will still come out and, and address uh, uh, or uh, say a few words at least. Yeah, at some, the some, before the one more. At thing. the beginning of the end, yeah. Okay. Regarding, regarding further price increases. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. If he wants to. He, 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 he won't mention it. That's for sure. Yeah. Whatever he tells you, um, you can't believe it anyway. So they could just yeah. get rid of it anyway. So. <laughs> I mean, listen, it, it's going to be interesting. Uh, like I said, tune in 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Double Barrel Gaming where we're going to give our raw opinions on what was shown. Hopefully, we won't be uh, disappointed and there'll be something to get excited about. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping, but we, we will see. We will see. Only, only time is going to tell. 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, you will be able to uh, check out what Sony is going to be doing uh, I don't know how much into the future they're going to show us. I mean, but again, we, we, again, we, we we will certainly find out. Big shout out to Outbreak Podcast, who drops a very generous two dollars super chat. I want to thank you for always supporting Double Barrel Gaming. And Horace drops another one. That was Jim Dance Room uh, D Dance Moves Boom. Yes, I that's sorry, right, that was me. I, I kind of messed that up. Uh, but listen. I kind of want to segue into something. We're talking about Sony, and of course, we have to talk about Xbox. That's pretty much the way it works, at least on this channel. You talk about one, you kind of got to talk about the other, because quite frankly, whether they publicly admit it you know, out in the open or they don't, they are in competition with one another. And there has been some talk on the PlayStation gamers side of things that they're getting excited and, you know, obviously there are some fans that are in the opinion that if they drop three megatons like a God of War and potentially a new Twisted Metal and Resistance Fall of Man uh, reboot, which is what I, one of my, my predictions, that it's going to completely wipe away uh, what Microsoft has done the entire 2021 campaign. And, of course, now you have people asking, does, does, does Microsoft need to respond to this? Here's my here is my easy answer, and I'm gonna get into the detailed one on the second half. The answer is no. They don't have to do shit. Pardon my French. Matter of fact, they've been doing it so well that if you want to say market leader, I understand. You know, we're we're talking a broad stroke here with sales and and and, and where it's available and how many people talk about it and how many likes and shares and clicks and whatever else. But for 2021. The console that everyone, the brand that anyone is talking about is Xbox. It's not Sony. It's not Nintendo. It has been Xbox. And I would dare say that if these consoles were readily available, I, I have a feeling that we could potentially see very close, whether they edged them out or they got edged out by, I, 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 can, see, I can see Microsoft being in the talk because, quite frankly... You know, the value proposition of the consoles 
versus what you're spending, what you're getting. And of course, Xbox Game Pass, it's just it's just it's it's no comparison. So that's the answer is no, they don't have to respond. Um, now, the long answer for this is, do I want them to respond? Well, yeah. Of course, I want them to respond. I, I want them to get out there and say, "Yes, yeah, Smokey, brother, uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to the show, brother." Seven PM tonight. I'll be back for about sixty minutes, sixty seventy minutes. We're gonna do a you know a live reaction. Uh, I'm not no longer doing these shows live because I keep getting uh, you know claims because you know what I'm not doing it. Um, but yeah, seven PM tonight. We will break down everything that happened. And again, it's gonna be a short show, an hour, hour and a half, give or take. The longest it will go is ninety minutes. Um, Boom. Can I can I briefly jump in here? I know it's sure. not part of the the actual topics, but it is actually a quite an interesting discussion because I've seen it also out on social media on YouTube. What does uh, Xbox need to do to respond to Sony and and stuff like that? Let me be clear here. Um, two things: Xbox has announced twenty first party games. I I actual. First party content. I'm not talking about the stalker stalkers or games like that. That we're talking are about actual first parties. party stuff. First yeah. party games. Twenty announced games. Before I, I always remember the number twenty one, but Psychonauts has come out now. So <laughs> yeah, it's twenty now. Twenty first party games. Compare that to the three first party games that Sony has announced. So. That's one thing that we need to consider if we look for an answer of uh, Xbox. Uh, this is the answer of Sony to Xbox. That's that's one point. And the other thing is really neither of the two, neither Sony nor uh, Xbox, needs to do anything this uh, season because both are selling all the consoles they can manufacture anyway. Uh, yeah, both consoles are sold out everywhere. They sell... Uh, sell whatever they announced to, today um all their consoles anyway so is it really necessary for any of the two to do anything um not really not really no. when you can they could also save up some of the announcements and some of the responses from from both sides um to next year or maybe 2023 depending on when the consoles will be available and they will actually have to fight for our wallets yeah um so yeah i wouldn't go into this um this uh event with like oh uh this is um a make or break moment for sony that's not it they are doing well uh, they're mm -hmm. doing very well uh and xbox doesn't have to respond because they have a big response they have their biggest year like since the 360 days if not ever and um the xbox doesn't need to respond of li but like you said of, we all want them to announce new stuff and talk about things but um they don't really need to yeah and, and that's that's a that's a short and sweet brother i definitely agree 1000 percent um i mean listen if, if i if i'm if i'm the uh xbox social team I'm looking at this and listen, anything Sony does, it's people get excited, right? Like I'm getting excited. Like I listen, folks, I, I know that I'm a, you know, considered quote unquote Xbox guy, but I bought a PlayStation five because I love, I don't just like folks. I absolutely adore what they do. Now that's not everyone's bag. And I totally get it. You don't, you know, some people are like, nah, boom. It's, it's just not my bag. I want multiplayer with my single player. I hear you. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a selfish kind of a gamer. I want these single player story driven selfish experience, which is why I love their stuff. Uh, I, lo I love their I love their first party game. So I'm excited um to see what they bring to the table. But if I'm the Xbox team, right? And I'm sitting back, right? And I'm just chilling. And I'm like, "Okay, we know that whatever Sony shows, whether it be big or small, is going to take some shine away from Xbox because right now we just we we've been we've been doing what we're doing. They're going to be in the moment. They're going to take some shine away from everyone else. I I figure that the best way to handle this is don't don't talk about you know Halo or you know just keep doing what they're doing. But maybe make may, maybe make the announcement that the digital XO is coming in X month, and just call hey say listen hey Xbox fans, we're gonna you know we're gonna close out 2021, get you all excited for 2022, some exciting announcements. XO 2021 is happening on this date. I mean, you know, I mean, it, some people would consider that to be petty. Uh, I would consider that to be business. <laughs> That's just me. But, we, you know, again, do they need to respond? My answer and obviously Boxenberger's answer is no. And VJ will come to Cotton next after VJ. 
BJ, where do you fall on <clears throat> this? Uh, um, does does Microsoft need to be prepared to somehow answer God of War Ragnarok that is expected to be shown tonight? Um, the first thing I look at, Boom, uh, is that Sony are presenting themselves or, or have a showcase at this moment in time, and it's just prior to uh, September 30th, TGS. And they pretty much do this at... Um, every year right pretty much around this time so there's there's nothing to be to be alarmed about right and i i know you mentioned god of war i'm i'm a huge fan of god of war i played the franchise i love 2018's god of war um and i'm a big fan but let's let's just put that aside from 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 xbox's perspective it's all about strategy and remain open to being agile and if and it's always good to have a little doubt and i know it sort of may sound sort of um a little a little strange but when you have a little doubt um you always take careful steps you're always prepared right it opens up lots and lots of opportunities for you and we've seen xbox learn a lot from uh from the great announcement uh, at the back end of um, 2019 at the game awards to a few missteps in a couple of their presentations and we've seen that tra- and we've talked about it on the show boom right we've seen the trajectory in terms of how they've closed quarters and become a lot more efficient uh, and prepared, right, um, to deal with any and all eventualities. So my question is, well, not a question. So from from a logical standpoint, Xbox are always prepared for for um, for something, right? Because both both companies always come out with something fantastic, and then we all sort of it's like a tennis court, right? <laughs> we, go, we go to where the ball's being received and see, right, okay, is there going to be you know some sort of return here or a pass here? So so. And, and the reason is because we all love shiny new creative visuals and along with thrilling characters and brand new and, and, and entrancing worlds. And there's a reason why I mentioned that. And I'll come to, come to that in a second. And at the moment, it's it's very hard as, as Archimedes and, well, everybody knows, right, uh, to purchase a PS5 or even a Series X. And unless something, from my perspective, unless Xbox has something, you know, planned in the pipeline or, or something's on track from a certain studio to be revealed at this point in time, I don't see why Xbox needs to respond, given everything I've just you know, just already said. And Xbox have you know been clearly communicating. If you if you look at some of their tweets and and, and some of their shows, that they want their developers and their blogs as of their blogs, of course, as well, which is a key way of communicating communicating to us, is that they want their developers to focus on games. And we've already talked about the pandemic and how it's hit how it's impacted development um you know because i remember when we saw the recent reveal right when uh, we thought we were going to see a little bit of hellblade and they said look this is where we are in development process which did take some of us uh, uh, back i'm sure archimedes fell off his chair but um <laughs> you, you have to look at so i i think archimedes point on a, on a serious note is that he you know he's right in the fact that you know instead of demos and so on and so forth focus on the game development rather than you know a trailer or, or, or constructing a demo and, and so on and so forth because it takes away critical time Time, energy and resource but i'm not saying that xbox doesn't have stuff prepared already i'm sure that they have but and and tgs is not that far away right it's on the 30th and i know that you know they've said to us look you know temper your expectations and we're sort of more expecting uh a news or an update in terms of the the partnerships that xbox is strengthening uh within japan and and how they're you know laying out the groundwork um to to tackle japan and asia for the long term and um and that in itself i think will do a huge amount of credibility for xbox right rather than just keep showing content to us every five minutes and um of course we have the game awards right which xbox from the last few um shows that i can remember xbox really enjoy closing out the year right with with positivity and that would be a great time to sort of gather everyone together that you know that's um the sort of in the xbox ecosystem whether you're in the media whether you're a pub third party publisher whether you're a first party studio or whether you're just a fan or a supporter or an owner of a, of a series x and bring everyone together to close out the the current year but with everything to look forward in, in, uh, to in 2022. And I don't know if you remember that uh, la- end of last year, we were talking about, you know, uh, about the Game Awards and uh, myself and Archimedes, we were saying uh, on the panel on the show saying, you know what, it'd be really good if Xbox closed out the year well, you know, and at the Game Awards, because then they will be the, all the talk of the media going into the first, uh, first, uh, first quarter of the following year and maintain smart. that yeah. momentum leading up to other first-party games, which 
you know, they've got a lot of studios. We, we I really don't, I can't think of the top of my mind of all the first party games, but, but to get that momentum going in the first quarter, uh, which is obviously, you know, March is obviously Sony's financial year and then in June is Microsoft's and in terms of what's coming out for the rest of 2022 and perhaps in, even into 2023. And the other thing you've got to look at, Boom, Sony may go and announce a load of games, but let's be clear, like Archimedes just said, you've got first party titles in the next sort of, uh, two to three months, right? In Forza 5 and uh, Halo Infinite, which is going to dominate a lot of gaming hours. I think I think we're underestimating how many gamers gaming hours that's going to consume, let alone, you know, uh, Battlefield and f trying to fit in Battlefield 5 or 6 or whichever, whatever it is, Call of Duty, Vanguard and Far Cry 6. I mean, it's it's a really busy time frame. So you've got announcement versus releases. And for me, I'll always go with a game that's being released versus something that's uh, future promise. That, that's just me. And as I say, it, it all comes down to strategy and for Xbox to observe and, and act or don't not to react accordingly. Right? And Xbox, all they need to do at the Game Awards is to, to quell or disquiet in any sort of um, disharmony in the ecosystem or any reverb negative reverberations. It's just to show a little bit of, a little bit more of Starfield, and that will go a long way to measure up and uh, you know be on par or even surpass um, as, a, as a brand new, as I was saying at the beginning of the conversation, something thrilling, something brand new, something fantastic to as an alternative to Sony's God of War, right, which is effectively a sequel. And... As I say, it's all going to come down to timing, corporate strategy, creative diversity, and all of it to be executed based on all of the experience that Microsoft have gathered from the very announcement of the Xbox Series X back at the Game Awards in 2019. At the end of the day, they're two fantastic gaming propositions, boom, and I'm just really glad that both companies are keeping each other on their toes, and that's my take on it. Dude, like, fantastic as always. Cotton, let's get to you, brother. Um, you know, obviously... This kind of this industry that we all know and love that we come he gathered here today and you know and 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 my four live shows which is everyone comes back for which is unbelievably humbling uh, is to celebrate gaming in one way or another. Uh, one thing that we have learned uh, is that you know these two companies are the biggest of the biggest, right? They're they're there to yeah. throw the haymakers and try to knock out their component. Last generation, well, Sony threw quite a few haymakers. And uh, Xbox at some point went down on one knee, though they didn't get out of the fight. And now we see that they have 20 plus games announced already for first party. We know that they're in it for the long run. Uh, where do you fall on, does again, the, the expectations for tonight's show for Sony is that God of War is going to make an appearance. And I say, oh, hell yeah, because I loved God of War 2018. As a matter of fact, it was my game of the year. Listen to this, folks. If you, I, I'm going to date myself and also put myself on, on, on trial here. I said on Crossfire at the end of mm -hmm. 2017 that God of War was Boom's uh, game of the year 2018. And people were like, Boom, you are insane. You haven't even played the game. I said, I just know this game is going to be. And it should have been my game of the year, but it got edged out by Assassin's Creed. And I look back at that, and sometimes it brings a tear to my eye. Uh, but with that said, let's just say for shits and giggles that they get out there and they say, you know, the one more thing is God of War, and everyone's cheering. Right. And they have a couple of smaller announcements. Like I, I'm hoping that the, the rumor of a Twisted Metal Black reboot. Yes, please, because that's the best one in the yeah, series. That'd be awesome. Um SOCOM is supposedly, again, supposedly rumored to be in the development. And that's gonna, you know, address a lot of the complaints from gamers that there's not enough online PlayStation stuff. And man, SOCOM online would be dope. Uh, especially if they keep it intact with you know the third person perspective and not try to do this new you know Call of Duty shenanigans. Um, and of course, one of the other big rumors uh, is uh, Resistance: Fall of Man coming back. And uh, man, Insomniac Games they just don't take a breather, and they've been you know on Twitter and you know been kind of putting out some yeah, things. Yeah, dropping hints every um, now and then. Yeah, dude. So I mean, let, let's say for instance that out, out of the four that I mentioned, they deliver on two or three of them. Do you feel Xbox needs to respond or have they done a good enough job to say, you know what, we can take it on the chin? Yeah, I mean, I think Xbox, you're right. They probably went down on one knee for a little bit back there last uh, 
couple years ago, but I think recently it's been Sony who has been, uh, pun intended, taking an arrow to the knee with the whole Bethesda acquisition. I think that's, at the end of the day, at the end of the year, that's probably going to be the biggest event of the year to me personally with like how shocking it was and how how just industry shaking it was because that was just like the whole Zenimax deal was insane. I think Xbox is, they don't really need to respond necessarily. I think this is Sony's time to do that because like you said, we haven't really heard anything from them all year long. Um, But yeah, VJ made a great point. Even if they do, when they they come back at the, the um, game awards and just show something a little bit of Starfield. I think that was a fantastic point. Like we know God of War is coming not to take away from the hype of it. Uh, I feel like, you know, if they do show some small things here, uh, like you said, like a twisted metal would be huge, you know, just yeah. the nostalgia for it is it's massive. I think for everybody. Dude, um, still, it's Twisted Metal Black still my favorite, one of my favorite PlayStation games. Like, yeah, no, I, that was so the like good. main game I played on PlayStations, like because I never actually owned one. Like my personally, like my brothers have owned one. I played a lot of PlayStation in my time, but I remember distinctively the first games on PlayStation that I like absolutely loved as a kid was Twisted Metal. And like ready to rumble boxing too or something like just like silly silly games. But Twisted Metal is way up there for me. That'd be awesome to see. I mean, I'm expecting like we said it's a 40 minute show, so I'm expecting to see a full on trailer or something at least for God of War. Maybe them. I mean, they've had so many delays recently, you know, understandably that I think delving too much into their future as far as just like title announcements, that's probably as far as they'll go. But unless they have something that's like close, you know, like something a little bit smaller, like twisted metal, I could see like a, a quick trailer for it and an announcement, but I think they'll probably touch up on like what we know is coming and has been delayed, like God of war and horizon. And, uh, hopefully give us a few, a few little, you know, nuggets of, wisdom what's coming down their pipeline but i don't really think xbox has to respond and i think they will inevitably just because they have so much content that they're just like divvying up and like spreading out that we don't even really know everything they're doing about like you know maybe future acquisitions all these studios they have working on like who's to say they don't come out at the game awards and show some more starfield or show perfect dark or fable you know like there's so much opportunity for them to like clap back to this that it's it's I, crazy but I'm, I'm super excited for the show i do want to see what sony has to offer and to get people more invested in like okay this is why i need to beat the scalpers <laughs> to get my playstation you know this that, is why that's a great point yeah no absolutely do, do this. I, yeah you know one of the one of the, the one of the, the titles that i use for the thumbnail for tonight and the question i asked that we're gonna be we're gonna be uh we're gonna be taking on tomorrow morning's breakfast with boom is did sh- did sony do enough to uh prove to its fan base and potentially new customers that seventy dollar games are worth it. They're, they're right. specifically their seventy dollar games, um, and uh, yeah, like you, I'm, I'm excited, and we're gonna we're gonna get you know, we're gonna get back at it. I don't know, uh, uh, Big Cloud's gonna be joining us, I believe. Cool. Kaysante is gonna be joining us tonight. Um, I don't know who else is gonna be there. Again, even if we have only three or four people, hell, we may even I'm, have eight people. I, I might be free, so if you have not that many, I might jump in. Yeah, listen, listen, I'm you're, super... you're, you're, I'll, I'll, drop, I'll drop it into the DM, and whoever joins is is more than welcome. Awesome. Again, it's only yeah, gonna super be super excited for for, uh, for an hour. But yeah, I'm right there with you. I I, I agree. I, I think Microsoft has done enough specifically in uh 2021 that they don't have to technically respond uh they've done quite yeah. a bit of uh of, of 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 getting us excited as fans at least for me i have i don't think i'm going out on a limb here saying so no i think absolutely stoked. Uh, well listen 
folks, we're going to continue the show, but I got to catch up on the Super Chats because obviously the generosity continues to come in and I must. Absolutely, it's imperative for me to give the shout outs that's, uh, that's well deserved. And Drawn TJ, generous friend of the show, he says this after dropping a $5 Super Chat. Forza is going to be crazy. Indeed, it is Lord Roughness. Uh, drops an outstanding five pound Super Chat and says this year's mic drop was uh, Xbox Bethesda E3 showcase. Indeed, at 100%, dude. Last year's mic drop was the Bethesda purchase. No need to respond to tonight's showcase. 100%, bro. That is well written and said. Danny Passion Official drops a very generous. Five hours of chat says the Matrix trailer looked fire. Oh, dude, I watched it twice. It looks so good. And it's on. I don't have to go to the movies, which I'm very excited about. All I'll have to do is go to HBO Max, and I'm watching it. Um... And they said they should make a game as well. Yeah. The, do you remember the Matrix game? That was kind of dope. I'm not going to front. It wasn't oh, yeah. groundbreaking. The Matrix but, was sick. Yeah, dude. I kind of I kind of enjoyed that. He says, boom, you missed my super chat last Tuesday. Ah, oh, dude, I'm so sorry about that. He says, last Tuesday when I told you my sad story where xCloud shine. You know what, brother? I am so sorry that I did. But here is his story. And I read it and I will read it again. Sorry I missed it, Danny. Definitely I feel terrible about that. He says this after dropping an additional five hours of chat. This is my story. My four-year-old daughter broke my TV last Saturday. Devastating. Love children, but man, brings a tear to my eye just thinking about it. But with xCloud, was able to complete a Plague's Tale. Dude, that's dope. And now he's playing Psychonauts 2, yeah, which I'm playing, and it's just so good. It is. I'm kind of stuck. Yeah, you got to love the ecosystem, right? Yeah, yeah. I had the same when my Xbox broke down. Yeah, I went just went over to PC, played a couple of games on my phone. Um, it, it's just awesome to have options there. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent, dude. And I'm glad that you got your 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 your, your console back so quickly. That was, wow, it's pretty good. Qu quick turn. Record breaking, dude. Including shipping, uh, shipping wow. um, from me to Microsoft and back. Uh, it was only six days. Um, wow, dude, yeah, that's that amazing. Is, that's really awesome. Yeah. Uh, real quick, DeAndre Banks, generous friend of the show, he drops an outstanding two dollars of chances. Xbox has started showing they are serious to gen. Oh yeah, yeah, they absolutely have. Um, okay, so let let let's uh, before I get to the uh, the next topic, um, and I want to, I definitely we're going to continue this. Uh, we're having, a, I'm, I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am. I'm actually quite enjoying considering the hiccup that we had to start the show. Uh, Pixel Bit G good and generous friend of this show friend of the community was one of the winners uh during the song of iron giveaway that we did last week and nine out of ten people uh he being the tenth where i was able to get them their codes and i'm very happy about that but see he wanted to not accept the code and have me re-roll it live on the air which i'm going to do towards the end of the show and be thanks to his generosity someone in today's chat that has over wow 315 people holy crap that's awesome is going to win a 25 dollar code for xbox live 2 of course buy whatever it is that you want to buy and i will make that announcement as we do the outros i'm going to re-roll everyone and if you are a channel member uh, you will get an, a bonus uh, uh, entry. That's two rather than one. If you drop a super chat uh, now or in uh, and have dropped a super chat in the past, you get an extra uh, role as well. And I will be making that announcement towards the end of the show. So thanks again to Pixel Bit G and his incredible generosity. He didn't want to accept the code. He wanted to give it away to somebody else in the community. And here we go, folks. We're going to do that at the end of the show. But let's let's get to um where is, okay so th look folks this is one of the big topics that I want to talk about. That is my phone going off and very unprofessional. Um, I I I gotta talk. We have to talk about some of the things that Xbox has not done right, and we talked about it on the opening of today's show. And you know, look again, folks. We're not pointing fingers here, right? Uh, you know, Jason Ronald, who is the picture with best beard in the business, there's no doubt about that, has been very facing forward regarding the shortcomings and the complaints for um, the DVR situation uh, with the Xbox Series X and S. Um, 
as we know, and we have talked about, and I'm going to go to Boxer Burger first on this one. Um, we have publicly um, offered our um, disappointment in this feature. Uh, when you look at what Sony does with the PlayStation 5, right, th their sharing technology is fantastic, right? The share button, it's one push. You're there where you got to go. You can upload it to YouTube. You can go right to the socials, and you can, with a, with a hold of a button, record uh, your gameplay for up to an hour, put it on a memory stick, you know, load it up on your PC, and you're good to go. Very, very easy, super, super slick design, and I love it. Now, do I make use of it? Not as much as I would like to because I know this is going to sound crazy, like, oh, my goodness, problems in the world, boom. You can't stick a regular memory stick into the front of the of the console, which I think is stupid. You can only put it on the back. Now, the way my setup is, I have to kind of pull the console out, put the stick in, push it back. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, and if it, cold, if it falls off the stand, good luck trying to get it back on. So that's why I don't do a lot of PlayStation gameplay. I'm going to potentially get a second Elgato and just do it uh, on my PC that way. But we do have some new information on the fact that, yes, uh, there is going to be a big change coming to uh, recording video and editing said video uh, through a big acquisition. Now, I, I didn't know who this company was, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to my tech expert on the panel, which, of course, is, uh, you know, Boxenberger. Uh, Microsoft acquires ClipChamp to fix Windows' terrible video editing tool. Now, I pulled this story uh, from a good friend of this community, good friend of this show, Jez Corden of Windows Central. And uh, he had some pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, uh, unfavorable things to say about the way Microsoft has handled this. And you know what? He is not right. I mean, he's not wrong for uh, speaking, you know, uh, just to telling people the truth. It, it has not been, uh, you know, it, it, it's a feature that you would have expected to be top notch, considering that the share feature with the one press of the button was going to be something that they brought over, seeing how Sony did it. Uh, Archimedes, where do you personally fall on what Microsoft has done so far to address this problem? And do you think yeah. ClipChamp is going to be the answer that we have all been waiting for? <laughs> oh, boom. Uh, I have so much to say on that topic. Please, and but listen, there's no time limit, brother. This is a conversational <laughs> podcast. Go crazy. Okay. Drop your knowledge first, on us. <laughs> first, I wanted to say um, both Sony and Xbox are not handling the share and um, capture functions very well these days. Um, the actual capture function on the Xbox is right now actually better than on the PlayStation. Um, capturing stuff on the PlayStation is just a mess. You can't do it in 4K. Um, 4K 60 FPS is only available um, if you start your recording. You cannot record clips in 1080, uh, uh, better than 1080 60. That's just not modern standard anymore. Um, I don't know why they changed that. It is like it is. You can't capture 4K clips on the PlayStation. Um, on both consoles, you can't properly capture HDR. Um, if you capture your clips in HDR, the colors are all messed up. Yeah, you can't use those clips at all. Um, what about so, the, what about the darkness when you try and even share a photo? Yeah, that has to do with the HDR. Um, it it got a lot better on the Xbox. It still isn't completely fixed. Um, with all games, um, that's just basically there are there are two different ways you how you can handle um, HDR and implement that in in the game, and Xbox um, somehow captures the original way um, the color coding um, YCC 4.22 or YC 4.4.2, and those are the two things um, that you can do, and they they capture both, and one is screwed, the other works. So it really depends on the game, um, but. In both cases, um, on the PlayStation and on the Xbox, um, you cannot capture HDR at all because the colors are washed out. That problem we have with the dark, where you capture dark clips only, is when you capture an HDR game in an SDR clip. So 
that's really where we messed up. It got better. They improved upon that. And right now, as it stands, I prefer the capture capabilities on the Xbox because the Xbox allows me to capture at least 30 seconds in 4K 60 FPS clips. I can do that. I cannot do that on the PlayStation. And I can record up to one hour 4K 60 FPS gameplay on my Xbox. Um, that works just really well. Um, so I prefer that. However, coming back to your original question, the actual share function is way better on the PlayStation. Yeah, you can just better upload your clips. You can edit them. You can also, the, the sharing function just doesn't stop with uploading clips to Twitter. Um, it is also you, the, about the streaming functionalities. When you mm -hmm. want to stream to YouTube, you cannot do that on the Xbox. You have to have a, a capture card. Um, you can't stream to Twitch properly. You can do it on the Xbox, but it is just not on the same level than on the PlayStation. So sharing things is way better on on so on the Sony side. And one important thing, and that is probably uh, the the function that most people use when they directly upload from their console to their respective social media accounts, is that you have an actual studio where you can edit the clips a little bit, yeah, you can trim them, you can do a few minor things on the console. Uh, that just comes in handy. That is completely missing on the Xbox side. And that is what I'm hoping that this acquisition now improves upon. Because Xbox had that in the Xbox One days with the, what was it called, Upload Studio or something Apple like that. Upload Studio, they, correct, yes. Yeah, they completely stopped that app at all um now we you just have nothing uh, up there and it is um it is just weird for me because they added actually functionality to actually capture stuff yeah we now have the dedicated button on the controller we have the capability to at least capture 30 seconds of 4k clips stuff like that really they improved upon that and now they don't allow gamers to share now do I personally have a problem with that? No, I don't, because I'm a content creator. I, I copy all my stuff anyway on, on uh, the OneDrive. I have it on PC. I, I have to edit the clips I record anyway in a proper uh, video suit. But that's not th the casual gamer. The regular gamer just hits the share button and, and, and captures a screenshot and wants to share that with his friends on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever. And that's free advertisement. I, th I don't think that Microsoft has yet realized how important these kind of sharing functions actually are because it's free advertisement. If anyone Smart. here in that's the a, chat, point. we on the panel, we post these clips, these uh, screenshots, whatever, on social media, that's free advertisements. That's why I would, why I would give that feature a top priority to make that as good and as easy as and as convenient as possible. That, that viral marketing through social media is these days so crucially important. And you have to make that easy and you make have to make the, the quality as good as possible. Um, and that also goes for the photo mode that a lot of um, the of the Sony first party uh, games have. I think almost every game in there has a photo mode. Yeah, and I can't think of one Xbox game that has a photo mode. That's free advertisement. Let people take the pictures and put them on social media. And um, that's really where Xbox needs to improve in the shareability function. They also need to improve a, a couple of things um, on the on the capture side, even though they are ahead of what uh, Sony offers on their PlayStation right now, it's still not like it is supposed to be because we have that, those issues with washed out colors, with dark clips. Um, and still, I, I don't see a reason why we only can record 30 seconds of 4K gameplay. Yeah, that should be at least two minutes or longer. Uh, I don't I don't really get why they do it this way. Um, it has probably something to do with um, memory allocation or something. I don't really know, but um, it is. It, it just seems weird that we are only allowed to record um, like uh, 30 seconds, but still at least we can do it. We cannot do it at all on the PlayStation. Um, 
So yeah, there are a lot of things to improve. And while they are at it, they should also take care of that streaming functionality. Even though I'm not a streamer, I wouldn't use it. I, I know a lot of people that would like to stream to Twitch, to YouTube, to whatever, Facebook gaming, yeah? There, there are a lot of people that want to do that stuff, but they don't want to invest like 100, 150 bucks in a, in a capture card first and then get a proper laptop to actually handle that Dude, stuff. And the, they don't what, want that. Yeah. Well, what, they what, I had to do, what I had to go through to get uh, to record properly yeah. was was ridiculous. I had to, I went out and bought, a, 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 you know, the, 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 uh, the uh, Elgato uh, S I, I Plus, and yeah. then it wasn't working. It was telling me it would just not register. I had to go out and buy a switcher, which was ninety bucks. Mm -hmm. On top yeah. of that, to do and I and still I had no idea. Thanks to Cybernox, who uh, who sent me actual photos. But yeah, you got to put it in here. You got to put it here. You got to run it this way. You run it I'm like, what? Are you yeah. freaking kidding me? Boom. We, we will have a, a brief chat after the show. Uh, five minutes. I give you a, a two pointers how you can get rid of your Elgato at all. Uh, I, ha I have a couple of <laughs> pointers okay. there. Yeah, we'll, 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 talk, we'll talk on the back end. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I see, your, see your point. You couldn't get rid of your Elgato if you wanted to stream. For you, it's just capturing. Yeah. And if you want to stream, you right. have no other way than to get that capture card. And it's not even an option for a lot of people it's because their setups don't allow that. Um, yeah, it's not possible for everyone to connect their console to their PC and then backward their PC again to the TV to actually play the game. So that's just in, in people's homes, not everywhere possible. And especially not for the casual gamer that just wants to see, is streaming for me? Is, is this something I, I would like to do? And I, I still don't get why it is so difficult um, to do that on um, the Xbox platform. Yeah, you can stream to YouTube from, from your PlayStation, but you cannot do it on, on Xbox. I don't know why. Um, and it is a missed opportunity and a basically free advertisement that Xbox is failing to, to, to make use of. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And I think that you really kind of really hit the, the, the nail on the head, bringing the whole conversation home with missed opportunity for a free advertisement uh get you know when when we put our clips on the socials right uh now it may be a game that is a big xbox first party that everyone knows but it might be a game that's an exclusive a smaller exclusive like the ascent or the medium at when 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 it was exclusive or you know, the artful escape that's coming out, which it looks like it's already getting game of the year buzz. I mean, there's so many indie yeah, titles that are going to be in the game out, of the actually. year. Yeah, it did. Okay. So I, I definitely got to download that. I, I didn't get a chance to even turn yeah, on my I'm going to jump in after the show for sure. Um, <laughs> and just another one to, God damn it, to answer those. I got Sonic uh, Colors that I just bought, which is awesome. I mean, if you're an old school Sonic fan. Is that out already? Yeah. Yeah. It came oh, out. Man. It came out yesterday. It's dope. It's so good. It's so fast. It's, I'm going to actually record some footage because it, it works well with the podcast because it's, it's so speedy. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna get your we'll, we'll get your opinion now about this. Where, where where do you fall on the potential missed opportunity to get this um, HDR situation in in regards to recording video uh, on on your Xbox to post or you know do a podcast like me, you know, record an hour worth of footage of Game X and put it up there to run in the background as we're talking about Xbox. Right. Yeah. I mean, I personally, I, I'm not making, I'm not a content creator. So I've not really delved into recording past, I mean, more than clips, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not really, I don't really have a lot of knowledge on how well it works or doesn't work as far as like, you know, start, I know that there was the option to just hit start recording. And uh, I know a lot of people are having memory problems, like not having enough memory to store all of it. Uh, for me personally, I know that there was, I was having issues with, you know, recording in HDR and them coming out dark when I go to share them, but I don't think I've really had a problem with it recently. Am I, I don't know. I haven't had a big problem with yeah, recording I would clips. say, I would say about probably 80 to 90% of the games are fixed now. Yeah. Um, because... I think comes out like they have like a shading issue, but I think that's just normal yeah. for when you have HDR content on a non HDR uh, display. 
I mean, they give you the option to, you know, obviously you want to do it in the highest quality and HDR and everything, you know, you can change it if you want to. I just, this, I don't know. It's, it's sad that they did have upload studio, you know, back then and it wasn't like perfect, but it was something. And now we have nothing. And then you can go again to the streaming side where Xbox had mixer and it was very easy. And the, um, the delay between you playing and your stream was very minimal and since then, you know, there's tw- you can use the Twitch app, which is how I'll stream, and I don't really have a problem with it. It's just not as seamless. You, know, you got to go into the app and start broadcasting and all of that. But f- for me, that I mean, I would love to see it. Can only be get better, right? You know, so if, with the acquisition, if, if it gets better and they make everything easier, like the fact that you can, you know, I've been on the PS5 and the PS4, and I see you can share and stream right to YouTube and Twitch, like with the share button. You know, you don't have to go into these other apps, and the fact you can do it from YouTube at all when you can't on the Xbox is, you know, it's huge. The, I would love to be able to do that. That'd be an easy way for me to start getting like content off the ground just when I'm playing. You know, I just start streaming on YouTube. Like, no big deal. I'll stream on Twitch every now and then and post it on Twitter, but. It's mostly when I'm just running through games and it's it's not that hard to do and it seems like I have a pretty good resolution and not that big of a delay because I have a good connection here but as far as the problems I was having before with the recording of clips um, I don't seem to really be having that problem anymore personally I mean I was having major issues before where like I would record clips and they would they wouldn't even record, you know, at all. Or uh, I would try to record like a 30 second clip and it would only be like 10 seconds. It'd be cut short. And all of that seems to have been worked out. A lot of my friends like who play day in and day out, but they aren't like hardcore, like posting their clips on Twitter or making content or watching all the podcasts or, you know, just in the news all the time, they just record clips And they'll pull up the Xbox app on their phone and, like, text it or, like, send it to me or show me in person. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't have a lot of people who I know outside of this whole realm of gaming for me that have a really big problem with it. But for it to be improved is always something that I want and that's something that can be done. I would love to see them integrate streaming to YouTube and Twitch just through the share yeah um, that'd be great button on the guide because that would just it just negates this whole process of having to open these apps and it feels like for some reason you're doing something like third party that's not even <laughs> before <laughs> mixer was even on the xbox the same option to start streaming from the guide actually went to twitch i don't know if anyone remembers that but you could stream straight to twitch from the guide and then they did their whole thing with mixer and it got swapped over so I don't see why as soon as they got rid of Mixer, they didn't just like, okay, well, here's an immediate fix. Like, let's just throw YouTube and throw Twitch in there for streaming, you know, at least. But as far as recording, like, hours worth of gameplay, I have a Elgato, like, HD60 or something like that that I don't ever, ever use. But uh, just that I was looking into getting capture cards and doing all that for a while. But when I saw the Series X was coming with you know a 4k capture card and that was like levels beyond what i had the that i could afford to buy an actual capture card i was like all right this is gonna be great i'll just record my 4k clips and stream and do all that but i mean the fact that they acquired um what was the name of that company that they just got the name of the company is clip uh let me see let me pull up my uh let me pull up my notes over here i had gone past it just give me one second yeah i was just looking at it too it was a uh, uh, clip, clip champ, champ is yeah. what it's called yeah i mean so i think it just shows that they're like we said i think you said jason ronald like has acknowledged it they oh yeah yeah he's been he's been again give the guy a lot of credit uh, yeah he they done, can totally, he's um, not shy from going it. out there and talking about it saying hey folks yeah we know there's an issue yeah, they'll totally improve it. I think this is a step in the right direction where, you know, they're going out and getting these, acquiring ClipChamp, who obviously is someone who can help fix and assess the problem. And, uh, I mean, it's only it can only get better. I, I think it's been improved because it was pretty bad with, like, clips not recording and 
them being completely dark. I mean, as far as screenshots for me, when I take 4K screenshots and with HDR, like they normally come out looking fantastic. And anything I play back on my own TV looks phenomenal. So, you know, it sucks to hear that people do have problems with it. Nice. Well, I mean, listen, it's again, it, it's going to be addressed. I'm happy to say that, uh, you know, we talked about it and it just so happened they made that announcement. I doubt Boomstick Show had anything to do with it. This is something that's been in the works for a while, but I'm glad that they are uh, coming around on it. Before I bring VJ in on the conversation, got to thank a few people. Uh, Aaron JF94 with the outstanding uh two dollars of chances are, are you going to stream the playstation show not live no uh that's at 4 p.m uh, eastern standard time i am going to be coming back at 7 p.m eastern standard time uh with a panel to basically break down what they showed give our our reactions and then we will continue that conversation uh with uh you know the next uh new episode of breakfast with boom uh, the, the, the following morning. Um, we also have, uh, um, Arnef, the, the Arnef, uh, and I always mess up this poor guy's name. He's such a generous friend. Listen, dude, do me a favor, spell it out in the chat so I can write it down. Cause I always mess it up. Uh, he drops an outstanding two dollars of chances, best chat, uh, best panel on the net. Smash the like button guys. Well, thanks for the compliment and thank you for always being here and being as generous as you are. Drawn TJ drops an additional five dollars of chat and says hello and uh, hello Halo and Forza have a photo mode. Hope everyone is having a great day. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I think all games should have photo modes. That's just my personal opinion on it. Um, and uh, Q uh, Quibini Gaming, uh, welcome to the show, brother. First time I saw the name. If you've been here, man, I, and I I did notice you. I apologize. I would have remembered that name. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for the outstanding five hours of chances. Boom. Sony is showing games on IGN's on the IGN stream. They just showed Gran Turismo 7 gameplay. That's pretty dope. Um, so I guess they're doing a little pre-show before the big show. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. I will definitely uh check that out once we I am done with this uh live stream for sure. Uh VJ. Yeah. Um, have you, I mean, you heard what everyone has said so far. And again, this is maybe not the biggest topic of the show. I mean, it certainly leads the conversation because, you know, when, you know, when, when PlayStation, listen, we say it all the time. When Microsoft is doing something right that Sony isn't doing it, we give them crap and rightfully so. Uh, and I think now is uh, an opportunity for, well, Sony has done it right. And they've been doing the share button right since the PlayStation 4 days. And they seem to have really nailed down that technology. And it's one of the things that Microsoft is not doing well. And they have, you know, console is going to be out a year in November. It's, gl I'm glad that they're addressing it, but I think it's been a little long in the tooth for me. What do you, what, what are your thoughts? Um, difficult topic for me, but all I would say is that I'm kind of, kind of summarize. I don't want to repeat what everybody said. So in summary, it's like, you know, there's always annoying bugs, um, missing features, um, and um, and you've got the introduction of new features um, that are being addressed or added, right? And and in turn, it usually resolves issues, makes rooms for opportunities, and and strengthens the ecosystem. And then, like you said, it's being addressed, and that's good news, is it not? Um, look, I know that you may sort of pause at that and say, "Well, it's taking a long time," and I can I. I can understand uh, and sympathize um, that sometimes annoying, antagonizing, frustrating situations some of us face um, just take too long to resolve or are taking time to resolve and, and patience sometimes wears thin, especially when you when you want to move forward. And um, and let's be honest, struggles, you know, forget put consoles aside. You know, if you just look at people's daily lives, right, struggles are prevalent in, in most daily, in most daily lives, right, if not all. And um, unless, you know, unless you're sitting on top of um, the, the Mount Himalayan mountains, right, um, and meditating, and then you're pretty peaceful. But it's, it, I, I would say, boom, in, in the whole context of things, it's always worth the wait if expectations are ultimately met or surpassed. I know very little about video editing, editing, so not a topic I can sort of deeply contribute, relate to or comment on, boom, so I'm sorry about that. But what I would suggest is that, uh, according to history, 
uh, console gaming history, things do somewhat improve, especially during the life cycle or, or the lifespan of a new console, right? And these consoles are still relatively new. And I'm surprised they even got them out. And I think we talked about that as well last year, that these consoles were actually making it for, for the November launch when they, when they both did. And for all intents and purposes, I'm just grateful that I even have a Series X. And But look, you've got to look at the acquisition in itself. And I think you just pointed out yourself, Boom, that it seems or seems to suggest that or it does suggest that Xbox are aware and are addressing a situation. Again, I know I know very little about, and obviously it does exist, listening to, to yourself, Archimedes, people in the chat, and obviously Cotton. And you know, and I was I was listening to everybody what everybody's saying, and all I all I was thinking was I feel sorry for Danny, right? The guy who made the super chat that and um, whose daughter broke his TV, and now a devastating now he, move. <laughs> and, and now that he's got he's, he can't access his TV, he can't access his Series X, and and I hope that that situation gets resolved uh, so he can experience Psychonauts to uh, in all its optimum glory, and uh, and in time for Forza Five and Halo Infinite, and and I think for me, uh, from an inwardly and or selfish point of view. Uh, is what's most important, and uh, I just wanted to add, it's all available in Game Pass. Thank you. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, listen, great <laughs> stuff. If you're not going to come at it from a technical point, and I, I can't even come at it from a technical point because I'm not a technical guy. I, I, I'd be the first one to admit that. You know, real quick, um, I'm not even going to address it. I'm not going to. The, the chat is doing it enough for me. Look, I'm going to say this, folks, and this is this is off topic. This is just to kind of get the 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 conversation going. Um, I noticed that. When it's Sony's turn to get the uh, to get the paddle whacking, and if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. Um, everyone is everyone. Certain people in the chat are all for it. They're all rah rah rahing. But the minute you say something negative about Xbox, it's, it's it's somehow we are attacking them. That's not in fact the case. Uh, this show that has been running now for four years, as of November third, uh, then not this particular show, but the channel has always brought it 100. Uh, I don't pick sides. Am I an Xbox guy? Do I prefer Xbox over PlayStation if I had to make a life-threatening choice? Yeah, the answer is yes. But I still enjoy my PlayStation. And as much as I give it to Sony when they deserve it, I think that when Microsoft deserves it, you have to be fair about the commentary. And I, I don't understand why people get bent out of shape about that. Like, I, I don't understand. Why, why can't you? It, it's the same thing that I say about some of the very toxic Sony people. When you say something positive about Xbox, like I did with Psychonauts last week, the, the, that, that I, I mean, I had to sh literally sh uh, shut down my notifications on a, on a thread that I started because the negativity that came out of me saying that it looked like a Pixar movie was ridiculous, right? Now, I mean, maybe, maybe that for some people that wasn't it. It should have been a, you know, a, a, a you know, a, um, a movie that looks like Nightmare Before Christmas, as as opposed to a Pixar movie. I said Pixar because I think that was a good compliment. And people, I mean, the negativity that came out of that forced me to leave and shut up my own notifications because I was like, yeah, I, I don't yeah, want to see Pixar's it. a compliment, I'd say. Yeah, I, I would say it too, but some people were like, man, boom, you know, you're stupid. You know, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, listen, if I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna lose sleep. Um, but yeah, folks, so uh, listen, if you're if you're if you're that gamer that I'm talking about, and I'm not mentioning names because we don't do that on this program. We don't want to embarrass anybody. You gotta take a step back and and, and kind of just you know read what you're writing. And before you hit send, kind of maybe maybe delete it because no one attacks Xbox for no reason. We have a criticism that I think is an extremely valid point. And if you don't, well, then you know what? I don't know what to tell you, but that's how this show is going to run. If Microsoft is going to get the business, and there's been times where I will give them the business, I'm not going to be shy about it. If I lose a sub, I get a thumbs down, I get a fuck you, pardon my French, then so be it. But you know what? We're going to keep it real on this show, and uh, we're going to celebrate gaming like we always do, but we're also going to you know, make our, you know, if, if there's something that is, you know, a little bit funny or something we're not cool with, we are going to talk about it like grown people. I think we've done a good job doing that today for sure. I mean, listen, again, I, I anybody want to add to that that's on the panel? I know it's not a topic, but I mean, I, I, I think it's safe to say that we're pretty fair by when we talk negative about said X group that we, we, we keep it down the middle. No, yeah, doubt. absolutely. We do. Yeah, no, um, no. I, I think, uh, 
you're spot on. We always try to keep it real. We we all have our preferences, yeah, um, and we don't hide that. I have never heard you or anyone else um, f from the dozens of podcasters I've been with here on the show uh, say anything uh, different. Um, we we have our preferences. Um, and we don't hide that. That doesn't mean that we cannot uh, complement um, something good about any other platform or vice versa. And um, yeah, I, I've said yeah. it many times, boom, you and I, uh, and, uh, I don't know about VJ, um or Cotton, but we have been multi-console owners before Xbox and Sony even made uh, consoles. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm a fan of video games, first and foremost. And um, I always look, try to look at th things from the perspective as a gamer and a consumer and a customer uh, about what do I get from for, for my money. But it, mm -hmm. because in the end, all these ma companies are in the business to make money yeah and so i as a customer want the b best for my money and that's how i approach the things and yes recently we have been more critical w with playstation than we have been with xbox but it doesn't mean that we don't speak up i remember the discussion we had about the uh, xbox gold price hike yeah. um 100 yeah, we, we we immediately came out and, and, and exactly and, and denounced that almost yeah. instantaneously yes uh, and in in the end, um, uh, I think we are always on the side of gamers here, um, and and that is what people should focus on. But it is like it is. You can't say something good about Sony or PlayStation without anyone coming at you, and uh, let alone say something negative about one or the other. Uh, people will always come at you. Um, it's, it's something we just probably have to deal with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I, um, I personally don't get offended, dude. Listen, this is the yeah. thing. We we do this. Everyone that comes that's a part of my panels, uh, I try to represent uh, even better than myself because it's my job to. I, I, I must represent uh, this community in the biggest and best way possible as well as my panel. Uh, the, everyone goes before boom. That's just the way it is. So that's why I go out of my way to do the detailed research and writing that I do. I, I, I have the panels set up the way I do specifically because these are great people. These are great content creators that I love working with. And we're always going to bring it uh, real. We're going to keep it real <coughs> with you. And I think we all do a pretty good job. So again, if you, if you get mad when we start talking negative about your brand, you got to understand where it's coming from. It's not a, it's not coming yeah. from a, a source of hate or discontent. It's a, it's it's we have an issue. We are addressing it, and I think we're always fair. Yeah, G, VJ, you want to add to this? Um, I think, boom. At the end of the day, if you really look at um, the human species, right, you've only got two types of people: not good and bad. You've got joyful people, and you've got miserable people. Yes, and correct. Miserable and what miserable people tend to do is create. And if you watch them, if you watch people very carefully, they create tension in their body and in their mind. And what effectively that they want to do is they want to find anything. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest, it's just video games. Mm -hmm. Is it really that important than loving your neighbor or anything like that? Right. And and if you're going to create that kind of negativity, all you're doing is harming yourself. Right. You're, you're, you're causing an issue for yourself. And, and all people are ultimately trying to do is find a way to vent that poison or venomness and bring you into their sort of realm or within their sort of circle, right? And the best thing to do is is just not to fall for it. Just put a smile on your face and um, just just understand that it's just it's just letters and words put together, and they have no real deep meaning or, or sentiment to them because you've been on podcasting for long enough, boom, to know that the vast majority of people, I don't mean on the panel or in the chat, because I'll probably get beaten up, but have low rent opinions. And actually, if they make a statement, remember where it's coming from. It's coming from a place of misery. And, and you really don't want to take any part in that. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I, I, I appreciate the high praise. Yeah. And uh, listen, it is what it is. Yeah, um, at the end of the day, we're just here for constructive criticism. I mean, you this is all it is. No one's here agree. to chill That's out. Everyone fanta wants fantastic it point, Cotton. And, 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 and I honestly believe constructive criticism done in a proper manner without um, any behind the scenes initiatives mm -hmm. is always good for the brand, right? It's, it always makes their brand a better brand, whether that be Nintendo, whether that be Sony, whether that be Xbox. I believe that everyone 
is better for it if it's done in a proper manner. And, and, and I believe that is, in fact, what we do um, uh, on a regular basis. Real quick, before we get to outros, the winner of the donated $25 gift card that was won by Pixelbit G is Aaron JF94. What's up, dude? Congratulations. Uh, if you are on Twitter, DM me ASAP. If you are not, hit me up on Xbox Live um, and um, or, you know, we'll, we'll figure out a way. E email me. Go to the About page on my YouTube channel and get my email address and email me. We will get you that code ASAP. Congratulations. And once again, thank you to the generosity of Pixelbit G for dropping that code back into circulation with the community. Um, and we also have, uh, let's see, we have two super chats that come in. Uh, one is, well, both of them are from G-Man. A G-Man, I don't know if you're the same G-Man that used to follow uh, Double Barrel Gaming. Uh, and if you are, well, welcome back. If you're someone that's new, well, welcome to the show. He drops not one, but two uh, Super Chats of $5. The first one, he says, hey, Mr. Boomstick and panel, longtime listener, but not a vocal person, features prioritized based on usage. Clearly, those features are not used by end users. I mean, that certainly could def uh, make, make sense. Like, where, where do they put it on the, on the uh, most important list? Is it, you know, back with compatibility? Is it, you know, this console's running, you know, uh, you know, well, whether you be on your console, your phone, or, or recording your stuff and putting it up on YouTube? That's something I believe we will get eventually. We also have another Super Chat come in from G-Man. He says, by the way, love the shows. Huge thank you for the high production value and, and great conversations. Well, thank you for the extremely high praise. It is um very it's, it's it's certainly welcome and folks we 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 had 800 um 800 i wish uh 300 plus people here almost the entire show and i hope everyone enjoyed it sorry i wasn't on camera i'm happy that the show got off without a hitch uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup we started a little bit later than i would have liked but you know what uh the show did in fact go on and uh, we didn't uh, have uh any real technical issues knock on wood you heard me knock on wood. Uh, but listen, let's start with the outros, and we'll start first with our newest member, Cotton McCass. Wow, dude. It's great to work with you on a regular basis. Tell everyone where they can reach out to you on social media, but more importantly, if they want to game with you on the potential upcoming Halo Infinite this December, where could they where could they do that? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Awesome to be here now, starting on a weekly basis, dude. I'm super excited. And um it was a great show. Great talking with you guys. And shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Cotton McCast. That's, uh, I got the same username there as I do on the PlayStation Network, although I'm not on there quite often. If you want to play some Halo, which I've been super deep into Master Chief Collection right now, trying to just get as many achievements and play through all the campaigns again. Uh, my gamer tag is Terry Fold, and yeah, I've been playing a lot of everything, and I'm definitely gonna be playing a lot of Infinite, Battlefield, you know, everything that's been coming out. So hit me up on there if you want to play something, or if you want to show me a new game or play anything, just let me know. Nice, nice. Well, yeah, folks, if you if if you, if you need the verification of uh, of Cotton McCass's skill, he helped us out big time during the Halo tournament. Uh, he stepped up and man, he's he's deadly. He's and that deadly. was a lot of fun. Yeah, he, he's deadly. He's gonna be he's definitely gonna be ranking up rather quickly when Infinite launches this December. And I cannot wait to get in and play or with a lot of people in this community because I'm definitely going in uh, uh, head first into Halo. I cannot wait for the multiplayer. Of course, I'm excited for the single player, but the, Halo is the one game that will bring me back to multiplayer, and I cannot wait for that. Boxenberger, thank you so much for being here. As always, please, my friend, tell everyone where can people reach out to you on social media, but more importantly, subscribe to your YouTube channel that has now surpassed 4,000 subs and check out yeah. the high production value videos that you did. And quite frankly, I think you've done four in the last week or so. Tell everyone where they can check that out. Yeah, first, thanks again for having me on the show. You know, uh, it's, it's always a highlight of my week to to chat about games and ga the gaming industry with you guys here. So I'm always grateful when I can be on here. And all, also a big shout out to the chat. Uh, we have always some fantastic discussions um, uh, in there. 
Uh, rarely there are trolls. Most of those, uh, the, the vast majority of, of people in the chat are uh, awesome gamers, uh, great parts of the community, and, and we rarely shout them out. So big shout out to them. And yeah, people can find me basically everywhere under Boxenberger, um, Twitter, Xbox, uh, PlayStation, and of course, like you said, here on YouTube, where I do have my small but growing YouTube channel. Um, YouTube has been such a great journey. Um, even though it can sometimes be a little bit frustrating with the algorithm, it's awesome to see um, the support and um, the feedback has been great and I couldn't be more grateful for the support people have been showing me there. So yeah, um, if you are interested in, well, uh, commentary video uh, 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 videos about the gaming industry, definitely check that channel out. Yes, and you do a great, I mean, the production, folks, listen, I, I say this all the time, and I, I honestly mean it. Uh, if you're a fan of Colt Eastwood, and really, who's not, right? Like, Colt's a good dude, um, and he does incredible videos. Um, I would dare say, and I think Colt would even agree if he was here, that the production value that Boxenberger puts into these videos is as good as his. I mean, not, not, even, not even making a full statement to shout somebody out for no reason. Please check it out. Uh, he puts uh, the work you. that goes in is... Listen, folks, if you didn't know these videos, what, 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 and you always ask, what, what, boom, why don't you do videos more? You should do more videos. You know what? No. Because if you do an eight-minute video, folks, eight to nine hours of your life is spent doing that video. And that's yeah. every it's, a, it's an hour per minute. That's how that's Absolutely. that's the production behind the scenes, FYI. Uh, I would rather do four live shows in a week. And you know, podcast for eight to nine hours, then to spend that on uh, on doing a video. That's why I don't do videos. I don't do reviews usually. Um, like the, the the video review that I did for uh, Song of Iron, which was an absolute honor. Uh, that took me six and a half hours uh, to do that video, uh, and uh, and 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 it does not. It doesn't even come close to. The it was a good about. video, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I kind of really want to talk it about Joe really specifically. Yeah. Uh, his background was super, super impressive, and to be able to help is just cool. Uh, the game is awesome. Part of that. Yeah, so oh, dude, good. it's so, so good. But VJ, where could people reach out to you on a social media, and more importantly, what else you got going on, brother? Um, make sure I'm not on here. Oh, I'm here. Yep, not me. Yeah, you are. Um, You're here. I, sorry, boom. I think um, I think there was a topic that we didn't cover. But um, all I'm going to say is um, Daredevil, and I have my reasons. So maybe yeah, you know what? Time. We're, we're going to, you know what? That That's an original <laughs> written one. We're gonna I was come back thinking yeah, Daredevil. We're, yeah, we're going to come back around to that one because it's pretty Love interesting. To. Love to. Uh, we'll do it next Tuesday. We'll open the show with it because uh, I still think it's worthy of a conversation specifically because of the relationship Microsoft has with them. I won't say what it is. I don't want to spoil the, the topic. We will. I will re um, re-roll that topic for next Thursday. Fantastic. And sorry if I offended anyone with my last set of thoughts. So I don't you think you did. I think you, you caught, were straight up you there. Caught me, you caught me off guard, boom, as usual. And um, <laughs> look, at the end of the day, there's um, there's no room for belittling others or, or their thoughts. It, it just shows how small you yourself actually are. So that's how I see it. And um, anyway, you can you can find me here on Thursdays and on Wednesdays. Yep, Wednesdays on uh, Midweek Gaming with um, Stubbs. Uh, nice. who, listen, who another one who listens to your show quite regularly boom yeah that's um, good dude good, good good podcaster and i think um we've got cerebral paul mr tushi animated evil and removal sanity on that show and uh believe it or not boom i was thinking about this the other day but uh yeah believe it or not i actually use up about 30 or 40 percent of my weekly quota of actually vocally spoken words all on this show so um yeah, <laughs> <the time laughs> well, we and we we love you for it brother and i'm glad that you are here uh as always uh and and uh you know we love having you on the show and obviously uh we make fun of your uh, incredible linguist skills but you know what we're, we're better for it as i think as a podcast or okay. uh, as podcasting group simply because it's easy for me to get out there and, and just blurb out what i had written for the show but I, I love your points. But listen, folks, if you enjoyed today's show and you're new, and I see a lot of new names here, folks, the the march to 10K, I, I just I don't think it's going to happen this year. Uh, we are currently at almost 88, uh, 8,800 on YouTube. We are getting close to hitting 9K, which is going to be incredible. Uh, to, to hit 10K would be like insane because I, I never thought i'd be able to hit that kind of number when you start out with one sub you, you never know how the stuff is going to go um if you're new and you enjoyed the banter 
and you want to uh, be privy to four live shows per week, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you want to support the show monetarily, so it allows uh, the ability for Mrs. Boom and I to do a bunch of giveaways, and we're doing some big ones coming for the end of the month, this month, and of course for the holidays in December. Um, we do that. We we, we recycle the the super chats uh, after uh, after um, the thirty percent comes out from YouTube because that's you know Google. They take their money before you even get yours. Uh, we then put that money away and we use it to. Uh, give back and we do that on a regular basis and uh, we do that through uh, channel membership and of course the super chats that come in so thank you so much for all of them that came in today and of course I'm going to close out the show with something folks that's important to me hopefully one day it'll be important to you and that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids and he said son treat others how you want to be treated and also it doesn't cost anything to be nice you live by those rules and I can guarantee you you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next week on the newest episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast.